Hi, I'm Roseanne and welcome to my garden. It's August and despite the hot dry summer we've had so far, the flowers are looking pretty good. In this video, I'd like to show you around the garden area surrounding the shed. Let's begin with the large, sunny, mostly perennial bed. It's on the north side of the shed, but not directly north, so it gets a lot of sun. Its color scheme and personality changes throughout the summer, and right now it's all about phlox and lots of pink with some red highlights. The bed is planted relatively tightly and might look like a jumble of plants, but I like the implied carelessness of a cottage-inspired garden. Plus, the dense plantings cut down on evaporation and weeds, meaning I water less and weed less, both wins. But look at this showy, blousy lily. I laughed when I saw its name, Table Dancer. When I purchased it, I didn't realize how big it would be. I also like varied heights in my beds, and to achieve that look, I rely on this maypole fashion support. This year, I started climbing sweet peas from seed. They're very light and airy, and I like the mix of colors. There are three different phlox varieties in the bed. The most obvious is the Red Lord Clayton. I like some red here and there in the garden, as long as it's not too much. The silver plant in the middle is an Artemisia. It's a great complement to almost any color in the garden. Then, we have cotton candy phlox, aptly named for its particular shade of pink. Watching this swallowtail butterfly, maybe it's sweet and tasty as well. Lastly, there's the lilac-colored common phlox, for which I do not have a cultivar name. I don't recall where I first got these, but they can be found throughout our garden. Dalmatian peach digitalis, or foxglove, is sandwiched between the flocks, but it definitely can hold its own. This variety blooms in the very first year. Most digitalis, a biennial, only bloom in their second year. In the background are magenta colored four o'clocks, so named because the blooms open up later in the day around four o'clock. Just a few weeks ago, this bed looked quite different. Instead of the table dancer lily taking center stage, an Asiatic lily named Tiger Babies took over the scene. I just love the color and the shape of the blooms. Normally, I like to have a lot more blue or purple in the bed, but this year my delphinium decided to underperform. The hot cherry calla lilies were also prominent then. They bloom for about six weeks and have just about finished blooming. Even when they aren't blooming, I like calla lilies for their foliage. The clusters of big, thick leaves help to calm down a busy flower bed. I always plant a vine on the rustic trellis surrounding the front door to the shed. Lately, I've been planting Love in a Puff vine. It has the most charming green seed puffs and delicate foliage. I start these from seed in the spring. The shed area always seems busy with chipmunks. Here we have a cute little visitor looking like he's standing guard or waiting for someone. I love this flower. It actually uh, is stock that came from my grandmother, so it's, uh, there's an extra connection. But it's called Rutabecchia lacinata hortensia. It can grow six to eight feet tall in the right conditions and has the most attractive casual yellow flowers. Perfect for cut flower arrangements or just enjoying in the garden. I just love Latin names because the, uh, the second name in the Latin name, La Cienata, um, in this case is very descriptive. It describes the lacerated leaves of this Rutabecchia plant. On our way to the south side of the shed, we find a rather stately rabbit statue. We call him the mayor. In the foreground are remaining, mostly spent, thistle heads of a blue globe thistle plant. When they're flowering, the heads are a lovely shade of blue 
and very popular with the bees. It's a carefree native plant. Here's another angle of the mayor next to a Thai pink jade phlox. The area south of our garden shed gets sun for over six hours a day and the plants we grow there must be sun loving and heat tolerant. On the very corner of the shed we have a red currant bush. Every year it's loaded with currants but it's always a contest to see who gets to the ripe fruits first, us or the chipmunks. Another plant that thrives on hot sun is Anis hyssop. You can see its purple spikes in the lower right of the screen. This is actually a cluster of six plants. The plant gets its common name from its delicious fragrance. If you rub the leaves, the most appealing anise or licorice scent is released. As you can see, the pollinators absolutely love this plant. Birds do too. Yellow finches feed on the seeds, so I do not deadhead this plant. My one complaint is that it reseeds a bit too easily and creates extra work in the weeding department the following spring. I normally always have a vine growing up on the south side of the shed on this trellis and uh, this year I've decided to grow Cardinal Climber. Right now it doesn't have any flowers but it will have cute little red flowers when it's ready. But in the meantime I love the leaves. I think they're so exotic and striking on this trellis. Next to the trellis I tried a new plant this year, Gumfrina. This variety is called Las Vegas Mix. It has the most delightful little pink and purple pom-pom flowers. Rabbits love it, so beware. On the other side of the trellis, I planted a tall dahlia with the deepest magenta colored flowers. Its size and its lovely flowers create quite a presence. This plant will bloom until the first frost. As with calla lilies in our zone 4 climate, dahlia rhizomes need to be dug up in the fall and replanted in the spring. In front of the dahlia, I planted hidden dragon zinnia. Its deep pink petals tipped in white are the perfect complement to the magenta dahlia. As the blooms mature, they get thicker and thicker with additional petals. Behind the shed, we grow mostly annuals especially those good for casual cut flower arrangements. This time of year, the colors blooming are undeniably bold. The yellow flowered plant should look familiar from earlier in the video. It's Rudbeckia, an easy to grow, hardy perennial. Because of their height, I do use twine and stakes to support them. The tall multicolored flowers are Benary's giant zinnia. I start these indoors from seed, mostly to get a jump on the flowering season. They provide reliable color from July until frost and also make a lovely cut flower. Then we have snapdragons, which I purchased this year as small little plants. To keep out the rabbits, we regularly put a chicken wire fence around this bed and several others. Also blooming now are the orlea. The lace-like blooms are beautiful on their own or as filler and floral arrangements. These germinate reliably from direct sowing. Lastly, the nigella are done blooming now, but they were beautiful. Even when they're done blooming, the seed pods are so interesting. I'll eventually gather these for the seeds, which I'll direct sow next spring. As we finish our loop around the north side of the shed, we once again come to the flower bed that began the tour. In the foreground are large leaved summon substance hosta, and the plants with the bright white blooms are bobo hydrangeas. Bobos are very hardy plants that have strong stems that resist drooping after rains. Before we end the tour, there are a few remaining plants I'd like to show you in front of the shed. First off, is the Sagina subulata, commonly referred to as Irish moss, growing between the flagstones. Then I'd like to point out the flowering four clocks to the right of the screen. 
in addition to the magenta you saw earlier, here I have a salmon sunset. I like the way the colors work together. The tall narrow tree is a Troutman juniper. It provides structure and adds another layer to that part of the garden. The white flowering plant in front of it is a devil's trumpet, a gift from my cousin. It produces large trumpet-shaped blooms from mid-July until frost. I hope you enjoyed this video tour. Thanks for watching.